Hey, food friends, and welcome to the Food Founders Podcast. Whether you're looking to get on your very first store shelf or you're looking to grow your national or even international food brand, this podcast is going to teach you what it really takes to launch, grow, and scale a packaged food brand. Hear the food founder journeys of brands growing in their industry so you can fast track your food business success. I'm your host, Ainsley, and this is the Food Founders Podcast. Hey, food friends. Welcome to the Food Founders Podcast. I'm your host, Ainsley, and today I'm thrilled to have Megan Riggs of Crunchy Hydration with us. Megan, welcome to the Food Founders Podcast. Hello. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here virtually. (laughs) Yes. Yes. I am really excited to hear more about your story and have you share your story before we kind of kicked off. We're on video for everyone listening. So Megan, of course, is hydrating herself today during this call. What are you you drinking right now, (laughs) Megan? What version? Uh I am drinking the Energize. So that one is mango. It has organic green tea, a little bit of L-theanine for your brain and cognitive function. I was just feeling kind of tired today and I grabbed an Energize. So <laughs> that's that sounds delicious. Okay. So for anyone who doesn't know crunchy hydration after that description, they're probably like, oh, what is that? They're like, um, what are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what is crunchy hydration? Yeah. So crunchy hydration is uh, my baby. It's my boyfriend. It's, <laughs> it is my business that I started last year. It is a sparkling herbal water company. I struggle a lot with anxiety and bouts of depression, and we can go on and on into the the background of how it really got started, but my goal with it is to just provide a truly clean beverage that helps obviously with hydration, stress, anxiety, and it just makes you feel good. Like Every time I grab one, I just kind of close my eyes and meditate, and I'm like, this is my little moment with myself, (laughs) so I want to share that with everyone else. Awesome. I love that. I I love the food industry for the fact that people create products that they just needed in their own life. Can you share a little bit about, you know, what, what got you to start this? Like you talked about, you know, dealing with anxiety and depression, like you could have done a number of things to kind of combat that and help other people. Why did you choose, why did you choose this, this beverage? Talk to us about the beginnings. So I, I'm in, based in Virginia Beach, Virginia, born and raised here, grew up super small, conservative school, went to University of Virginia, and then I moved out to Los Angeles, had an awesome job, you know, fresh out of college, making all of this money, uh, doing very well, managing, you know, the whole West Coast operations and seemingly from the outside and society standards, you would think, wow, this person's doing great. But it was just I was going down kind of a rough path and I would wake up every day and it was truly like hard for me to get out of bed. I was sleeping 16 to 18 hours a day. I would get anxiety before calls and would cancel all the time. And I went to my doctor and was like, this is not normal. You know, what's wrong with me? And immediately they just tried to prescribe, you know, a list of medications. They're like, well, you're sleeping too much. We think you have hypersomnia. So you need Adderall and you might be depressed. So we're going to prescribe you this. And I mean, it was just a a laundry list of things. And I left and realized there have to be other options. So I had what you would call maybe a quarter life crisis. Um, I gave away everything I owned and just me and my little backpack and bought a one-way ticket to uh, Thailand and got, I was like, you know what, I'm going to find find the way and uh, got really into Ayurvedic medicine, holistic herbs. It was just, it was such a simple life. I would ride my little moped, like vroom, vrooming around to teach English at a school and would get a juice on the way, was eating plant-based, doing outdoor activities. And I was so happy. Like it was just simple. And I called my, I remember calling my sister and I was like, Kelsey, I am I'm starting a juice business. Like I figured out what I'm going to do. So I moved back to Virginia beach and opened up crunchy carrot, which is kind of how the whole get crunchy theme started. There was, I had a really uh, bad juicer and there was literally like pulp and, and crunch in every bite. So it's good. That's how the crunchy carrot started. We would work with local farmers and other women owned businesses, but that business just took off. I wasn't ready to scale it at that time. And 
So I found myself back to having stress as you, I'm sure, you know, with starting businesses and then kind of found myself being like, all right, get back to what you started this for, like your mental health, serving others, nutrition, um, self-care. And so I got back into the Ayurvedic medicine and adaptogenic herbs and was working, selling my juice at this local brewery. And they're like, well, we have this amazing production facility. And it was just such a blessing, like literally thought of the idea with them and, and started it like a week later. <laughs> so that that's the long story of how it all started. Um, but yeah, the blends that I started with, it was literally just what I had taken based on the fact that I knew I have I have struggled with anxiety. So I'm just going to take these adaptogens. I'm going to take these nootropics and those were my first two blends. There was a calm and an energize. um, And it just grew from there. That's such a great story for like so many reasons. Um, And it must've been really freeing at the beginning to be like, Hey, I'm going to go like, honestly try and find myself. And yeah, it's funny as some people go and do that seeking the business solution and other people just go and are seeking like their self solution. I think most times you get both. Um, Yeah. Whether you're looking for them both or not. And what a great like natural progression to having the product that you have today. And it was just blessed, like coming back and having the support from the community and realizing that so many people, as I started to share my story, also suffered with anxiety. And I was teaching with the juice nutrition at schools and my lavender rose lemonade is good for stress. And these little fourth graders were raising their hands being like, I have anxiety. And it just broke my heart to think how our society has shifted because, you know, we're constantly plugged in. Our phones are ringing 24 seven. We have like, even owning a business, it's like, I have 25 different ways to check notifications. And so I have to check myself all the time. You know, I drink four of these a day. So it's just, yeah, I don't know. I love it. I could talk about it forever. <laughs> Have you found that sharing your story, it, it's connecting with people. Was it was it difficult for you to share it at the beginning? Oh, totally. Yes. I just wanted to, to hear everyone else's story and help them and find a solution for them. And it was honestly, even until recently, like four days ago when I posted a picture of myself and an introduction on my crunchy hydration Instagram. That's the first time since starting my business in a year. So it, it's definitely hard for me to publicly, you know, this is my first time doing a podcast and just telling people, you know, here's how I got where I am. And here's, you know, how I hope, hope that I can help you, but I'm definitely getting more comfortable with it because I realized that's what else is the purpose other than sharing your story and hoping that it can help someone else. Yeah. I think you just nailed it there. It's like, we do it for ourselves, but for everyone else as yeah. well, right? Like I always say, like if you have a product like yours that is truly able to change people's lives, it's like you owe it to to the world to like share your story as much as possible, grow it as big as possible because you know that it can have an impact on people's lives the same way it has on your life. Yeah. And like two weeks ago, I was delivering to a couple of the teachers in Virginia Beach. They placed an online order and I dropped it off. And she emailed me saying, um, you know, my son brought up the waters to his quote unquote teacher. And she's like, I almost cried. Like, it's just been so tough. And your waters are what have gotten me through. She was like, my stress levels have been through the roof with virtual teaching. And she was like, I don't, she's like, I can't live without them. And I, it just, that's what makes it all worth it. And, um, knowing that it makes a difference really and nice. it's fun. It's so fun. Like I just craft, I'm a mad scientist. Like yesterday I wanted to do a fun winter blend. So I'm like, okay, rose hips and hibiscus and cinnamon. And I'm in my kitchen just playing around and trying to get the vitamin C content up, you know, just from the herbs. And I, I just fun. Like literally you can come up with an idea, start a business and run with it. And it is whatever you make it. Okay. That you make it sound so easy, but I'm sure there's people listening being (laughs) like, I have this magic formula that I know my family loves and I've been wanting to like bring it to the market. And they've been so afraid. Like what, what is it that you think can help people take that idea and actually bring it to a business? I would say for me, it was just expressing that interest with friends and family. And the more you put that out there and you visualize and talk about it, like I know that I want to start, I'm starting another business launching in Q1 and um, just talk, the more I talk about it, I'm like, all right, we're going to do it. And realizing that 
that is your purpose. And there is like, if you have an idea, it's probably a great idea and run with it. You're going to fail, but you, something will come out of it and you'll learn something and it'll probably be great. So just do it. (laughs) Just do it. It's so true. It's like, yeah, there's going to be ups and downs, but you're going to be a different person at the other side of it. Right. Yeah. And just like the more you talk about it and put it out there in the world, you know, that's how I got the connection with the brewery. And then it turned to connections with distributors and then it turned to connections with Whole Foods. And it just, it's this cycle of putting good things out there, letting people know what you want to do. And at the end of the day, I believe that everyone wants to help each other. So I'm like always trying to connect people. Anytime someone comes to me with a business idea, I'm like, all right, let's go. Let me figure out how to help you. (laughs) That's so, that's so great. That's one of the things about this industry too, which is beautiful. And you've seen it from like day one in terms of everyone just wanting to help each other in the food and bev industry, which is fantastic. And then your consumers get behind it as well. And you just don't know what's going to lead to what. Yeah. Or my first beverage conference that I went to, I was terrified. I walked in there. I'm all nervous. I have my cute little tie-dye dress on. And the first person I sat next to was this guy who had worked for Coca-Cola for 30 years. And he, you know, has just been such an amazing advisor to me. And I just put myself out there, sat next to this random person. And now he's part of the team. And so it's just incredible how it works. And, and I just, I, the food and beverage industry is awesome. Like everyone wants to connect. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's, that's so, great. Just putting, and like what you're there. doing, you're connecting people, you know, every day, exactly. it's like, how can we connect and help? Absolutely. That's what, that's what fuels me in so many ways. I know that there's just so many great products out there and how do we kind of stay stop them being from like the world's best kept secrets and like put them out and allow people to connect with you. you, Like you don't know who's on the other end. It can be new consumers, it can be new investors, it can be new advisors, it can be all these different pieces. And that's really important. Yeah, totally. Okay. Question. Do you still have the other business? Do you still have the crunchy carrot? I do. Okay. And if you guys, if you guys could see the video, you could see my little carrot tattoo behind my ear. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I love that. That's so awesome. (laughs) So I, I will say what I realized last year was just tough. We had, I had like five deaths in the family and starting two businesses was tough. And so I put it out there that I, I didn't, I could not physically be there juicing. Like it is the labor of love waking up at 5am and going to the farm, getting the produce. Like, um, so I've licensed that brand to a cafe where I was making the juice and they make it and I get a profit from that. And so I'm still a part of the creative process and I help them, but I'm not actually physically, you know, carrying hundreds of pounds of carrots every day. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably grateful for that in some ways. I'm <laughs> um, yes, very grateful. <laughs> Has there been a lot of overlap between that type of business, like having a restaurant or like a pop up? How what would it be? Would it be like a juice stand? Like I'm trying to envision it right now. It, okay, so it's really. I'll send you a picture after. It's this really beautiful old house, like hundreds of years old. It's green and they converted it into a farm to table restaurant. It's on the water, lights strung everywhere. And I rented out the bakery side and used the commercial kitchen there and was juicing and they would sell it through the restaurant. We would do pop-ups in the back and sell produce. Like it was a a vibe. (laughs) Cool. Oh yeah. You just painted this like beautiful picture for me. So this is great. So that to a canned functional beverage company, a lot of over, overlaps, a lot of differences. Um, what do you think was one of the main, like one of the new challenges that you had to overcome and new learnings that you had to overcome moving from one business to the other? So that is a great question. We'll start with Megan's first canning run. So <laughs> my first two flavors were the Calm and the Energize. And, you know, I it was just me. I literally started the idea and then launched it. So it we just kind of really dove in into the deep end. And my first two flavors were raspberry and blue raspberry. (laughs) And and it was just, it was not, it was a little bit of a disaster. Um, So I had to learn that I think something's great, small scale, but when you're taking it to a massive production facility, they're like, I had to get my organic flavor chemist involved. I had to, you know, figure out the balance of electrolytes and Himalayan salt to make it you know, shelf stable and taste good. And it, 
it wasn't just me. And now it's opening up to, okay, like let's get it perfect and get the packaging right. In Virginia, there's just regulations with the Department of Agriculture. So those, there were those obstacles to overcome. Um, I mean, every day, I mean, even right now I'm having to deal with the national aluminum can shortage. So it's, there are always challenges, but I'm like, all right, what's it going to be today? (laughs) So, but yeah, my first canning run was a mild disaster and it's so funny to look back on. (laughs) That's like part of the, that's part of the journey though, to like be able to look back and be like, oh my gosh, look how far I've come. Right. Right. (laughs) Every time, oh yeah, driving. So I canned it all. I had to get it to a warehouse. So I used the brewery's box truck. So I'm like, you know, in my little romper driving a box truck with, you know, 20,000 waters in the back. Half of the pallet fell over. There was mango energized squirting everywhere. I mean, it was, there's, it's entertaining. (laughs) Oh my goodness. And I love that, like, you've still stuck through it and you're so like joyous about it all now. And you can like, just laugh at it. You know, you're like, all right, what, what else are you going to do? Right. Come on. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. Everything that happens, that's a slight disaster. I'm like, this will be a good story one day. <laughs> yes. That's such a great way to look at it. And, like, and you just I, have to learn. Exactly. It's all learning. Right. And you haven't been where you are right now ever before. So how right. on earth are you supposed to know how to figure it all out? Right. Right. And going from small little juice, like that I have complete control over Mm -hmm. making the juice. I know where I'm getting the produce from the farm. I'm directly selling it to the customer. I'm doing farmer's markets to now I'm jumping into the beverage industry, which is, you know, can be slightly intimidating. And it's, there's not a lot of young women that are starting beverages and pioneering, you know, something where I have four different SKUs. Some have caffeine, some don't have caffeine, some have CBD, some don't have CBD. And it's just, there's, I'm still learning, you know, how to market and how to get out there. So, yeah, no, that's, that's great. And you're right. There's not a lot of, you know, young women necessarily doing this. So it is, um, it is tough to find those men- You can find mentors everywhere, obviously, but to find people who have really been in that, sh- those shoes to be like, Hey, I haven't been there before. What's it like? And I just also want to like call out, like you, you know, opened with kind of sharing your story about this life before we're going to call it pre crunchy Megan um, yes. <laughs> where, you know, stressed out anxiety, depression, and there's none of that right now. Like listening to you, you are just full of excitement. It's almost like it's uh, obviously the ingredients have helped obviously your lifestyle helps, but it also sounds like, you know, finding something that you're truly passionate about and diving head first into it allows some of those feelings to change sometimes as well, which is, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. That's, I I hear pure passion from you. I mean, that's, that's how I feel. And I'll go pitch it to a distributor and, or even just talking about it. And the people, you know, that are listening, they will come over and say, what are you talking about? Like, Mm -hmm. you're so excited about it. I want to buy some. (laughs) So I just, I love being able to do what I love. And like Mm -hmm. I said, you can literally craft anything and we're going to do a slight rebrand coming up and do some chakra inspired beverages and hydration packets. And I just, it kind of fuels like this excitement of how else can I change the status quo or not change, but challenge the status quo of what currently exists and provide greatness to nourish the community and Mm -hmm. to make us all think about what we're doing day to day and live intentionally. Because for me, when I was in Los Angeles and I was going down a certain path, it wasn't mindful living. It wasn't intentional. It was me, me, me. And like also avoidance, you know, Mm -hmm. like I sit here in silence and I meditate and I, I like really dive into what does my soul need? What does, you know, how am I making a difference? And I just feel like that's so important to change our mindset and perspective and to just kind of slow down a little bit, which has been nice with COVID. I feel like we've all been forced to slow down. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. It's a little bit of a blessing sometimes um, when you can look at it like that. It sounds like there's a lot as a founder that you really lean on to help you do all that you need to do. Cause I know there's like 25 different hats to wear all the time. Can you share a little bit more about some of those practices that help you stay grounded and focused on everything that does need to get done and, and how do you manage that? 
Yes. So every day I wake up and 100% I do my morning routine. So whether it's tea or hot water with lemon, I have my little acupressure mat that I use. I, during COVID, bought this silly $100 portable sauna that I sit in and meditate and do my affirmations. Um, But the number one thing is my morning routine. If I'm not doing it, you can tell. Um, Yoga. I've became a yoga instructor. So I teach hot yoga. I love doing yoga. I love the community that comes with that. And then, yeah, so morning routine is critical. Like I write down, I do a little devotional journaling, tea, acupressure mat, some stretches, hot yoga at night. And then what else was I going to say? Yeah. Honestly, for me also spending time with family. So realizing that I, it's because I love it so much. My life literally became 24 seven crunchy where I didn't know how to stop. Um, so now I'll be with my family and I'm like, guys, just cut me off. Just tell me to stop talking about it. Let's like go do a fun activity. So taking a little bit of space sometimes because everyone in Virginia beach calls me crunchy. I respond to carrot. Like it's just, it became me. (laughs) That's awesome. You, you live and breathe it. Which is, yeah. again, it kind of becomes inevitable when you are doing something that you're passionate about. Yeah, but taking time is also important, you know, yeah. just having that routine. And my planner, I use my planner now. <laughs> <laughs> I did not use my planner. I used to, because I have a really good like photographic memory and I thought I could remember everything. But it's just when you have 25 meetings in a day, it's tough. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So. And now your growth right now, what does, what does your team look like? Are you outsourcing to a co-packer? Do you have distributors? Like this has been a year long project so far. Like what's that year look like in terms of your growth? So we, well, we'll backtrack a little bit. It has been kind of a hurdle, at least in this area with CBD. So when I first started outside of the being a box truck driver and the um, mishaps with the canning run, our Shopify got shut down. Our QuickBooks got shut down. Um, we had no payment processing, but now that's all better. And we're able to actually start growing. And it's really just a team of two. So it's myself and then my one of my best friends that I've known since middle school. We went to Norfolk Christian together. We went to UVA together, but she's our COO. She does all the behind the scenes um, because I can't really sit still at a computer. So she keeps track of everything um, operations wise. And then we outsource it. So we work with still the brewery and they can it all for us. And then we have our distributors pick it up. And then all of our e-commerce is done via an order fulfillment service. So most pieces of the puzzle have been made efficient where I can go out and just do events in the community and go have higher level meetings and pitch to grocery stores. Um, But I feel like all of the crazy day-to-day tasks that I was doing have become a lot better. And from Q2 to Q3 of this year, we grew by over like 104%. And it's just been really blessed. So we're excited to see where it goes. Yeah, no, that's, that's great growth. And I love that you've outsourced the pieces so that you can do what you're great at, which is clearly enrolling people with your passion behind it and just allow everyone to kind of work in their like zones of magic that's going to allow the company to move forward. Exactly. For anyone right now who is listening and is thinking about starting a beverage company or they're at the early stages and they're just not sure how to break through that maybe next level for them, what, what advice do you have for them? Reach out to me. I'll help them. (laughs) No, my advice would be if you want to start a canned beverage, find a local brewery that has been so cost effective because you have no overhead other than paying for, you know, the packaging and the production, which is minimal. It's just the ingredients that you have to buy. So once you have a good recipe, you can boom, you can have a product. A lot of places right now want to help people grow and create new things. And so in regards to that, I would just say, if you can find a local brewery or a co-packer, you know, and just put it out there into the world. And if you need capital, it'll probably come your way. We just finished our first capital raise. So we're ready to grow for 2021, but it just took me actually putting it out there. I was so terrified for months and months and months. And then I just did it and it was blessed and it, and it came. (laughs) That's One of your secrets to success I'm definitely seeing is like this resourcefulness and 
ask and it is given. And, you know, you ask and you put it out there and it it comes back to you. But you can't just, we can't expect things to happen if we don't talk about it, right? Exactly. (laughs) I mean, I just, I'm always amazed by what, if you put out there and ask, like someone's connected to this person who will help you with this. And and then here you are. (laughs) Awesome. Drinking a mango energized. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but honestly, if any of your listeners want to reach out, I would love to help, you know, in any way that I can. Okay. So if people do want to find you, um, where can they find you? Crunchy hydration is our Instagram and Facebook handle. And then our website is crunchyhydration.com. Awesome. Thank you for that. That's such like, uh, that is so perfect with the food and bev industry. Again, everyone is just so generous with information in this, in this industry. It's incredible. Um, and love that you, you know, give back to the ecosystem as well. That's so great. I love it. I, I mean, you do too. Like it just, it's so fun learning about new people and new brands and ideas and, yeah. you know, let's change the world. <laughs> Absolutely. And I really do think that food and Bev is a great way to do it because it has such a great Agreed. trickle effect. Yep. Okay. Before we hop off, I got two more questions for you. Number one, you mentioned, um, you mentioned you guys just did a raise and that you guys are working on some pieces for 2021, maybe some new packages, um, maybe some new products. Can you give us like sneak peek on any of that or do we need to stay tuned and and kind of see what you guys drip out to us? Well, stay tuned for the other business I'm launching, but uh, rebrand is just based on feedback from the beverage conferences I've been to. They suggested just a little bit different look and feel for the can. So it's going to be a 12 ounce sleek can instead of the 12 ounce standard can that looks like a beer can, which will help with our placement moving forward as we, you know, finalize things with Whole Foods. It'll just be more professional. Um, It's going to be inspired by our seven chakras. So we'll have seven flavors, the four signature. So like the calm, um, energize and elevate, that's our signature four. And we're just slightly shifting them so that it's a little bit more intention behind them with every beverage for the chakra. It'll have an adaptogen to help with the organs related to that area of the body. It'll have an additional herb to help with that. The flavor is cohesive with that same idea the look and feel like the texture, it's all like the more you fall in love with the brand, you'll notice little hints of what we've been working on for six months, seven months, eight months, (laughs) um, in regards to just making it even more intentional because that's why I started. It was for anxiety and, you know, my stress. And I want it to just be even deeper diving into how can we make, you know, a difference with that and with each body part and our organs and functions and energy and how, it all relates to each other. So, and it's going to be kind of, it's similar look and feel. You you guys can't see it, but um, it's going to be this swirl of colors and it's really cool. I'll text you a screenshot. Yeah, please. I can't (laughs) wait to see it. That sounds so great. And so, like you said, like intentional and built all around like our chakras and just getting back to, you know, not that you moved away from it, but like really grounding yourself even deeper into yeah. why you started being aligned to that and letting that really propel forward because that's what people, you know, that's why people love you. That's why people are connecting to it. Um, go deep on it, right? Yeah. And it I, it doesn't even say anything on the cans about the chakras, but you, you know, you'll see as you try each of them that there's so much research about, you know, how the Shashandra berry and Eulothero and rosemary, and it's just, they're so good. (laughs) We're working right now with the brewery and we're doing small, like little kegs to test to make sure the flavor is bright with the new adaptogens. And it's just I, I love it. <laughs> I can't wait for you guys to try. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So when, where can people go and get your product right now? I'm sure all those listings will be carrying, you know, the full lineup once that they're, you know, the new flavors are out, but where, where can people go and find you right now if they want to camp? Yeah. So right now we, like I said, we're based in Virginia beach, Virginia. We're distributing to all of Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, up to DC. And then we ship anywhere in the US. Okay. And then we're working on expanding shipping. It has been difficult with COVID, <laughs> but we're getting there soon. So you can order online if you're not, you know, in those four states. 
Awesome. Okay, cool. Thank you so much for sharing. But in like six in six months, you'll see us in everywhere. So oh stay God. tuned. Stay <laughs> tuned. Absolutely. I have no doubt that you guys are going to continue to grow and you know be able to share your product with more and more people and help people with not only being hydrated, obviously, but really help heal their bodies and, you know, food can hurt or heal us. And this is a great product that truly has the ability to heal us. So thank you for taking that quarter life crisis journey all the way to (laughs) Thailand so that you could end up at this point here and sharing this with more people. And I'm excited to watch you grow, Megan. Well, thanks for opening the space to help me share. This was, I honestly, I was like a little bit kind of nervous and excited at first, but I'm so glad we did it and I'm so grateful. So thank you. Yeah, no, you, uh, you nailed it. You're a natural and you better get used to it because I uh, would imagine you're going to be sharing your story in lots and lots of places as we watch you grow. So thank you for sharing all of this and for inspiring everyone listening today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.